Hey love, Shantara Cabrera here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. So in today's video, I'll be showing you all how to create your own graduation fans using Cricut Design Space and Dollar Tree Photo Paper. So the very first thing you want to do is open a new project in Cricut Design Space. The next thing you want to do is hide the grids by clicking the box in the left hand corner. Now for this next step, I do recommend that when you guys upload your own image that you are uploading a landscape image. This is because we will be cutting this one out in a graduation cap. So you do want to make sure that your image is wide enough to fit the whole cap. So with the Dollar Tree photo paper, the standard size is 8.5 by 11, which is a regular sheet of paper and also the only sheet of paper that Cricut Design Space lets you use. So as you see to the side, they do have a little caution box. This says that we will have to reduce our image because it is too large. So just to make the caution box go away, I did go ahead and unlock the size dimensions and I changed it to six by five. So we most likely will be changing the size again, but just to move forward, go ahead and click upload and upload your graduation cap. Now I did lean down below the exact cap I used to save you guys some time. So if you would like to check out the description box, head over and download it. I also want to point out that this video was recorded last year during 2020. Um, as you all know, we're in a pandemic um, in 2020, so we didn't really have many graduations last year. That is why I did not upload this video. However, I am following along with the new version of Cricut Design Space, so everything should follow up with my words. So I did play around with the sizing, but nothing is finalized yet. So real quick, I want you guys to go ahead and drag your mouse across the two images to group them. All right, so after you click group, go ahead and click duplicate. This is to assure that we will have an extra copy just in case we were to mess anything up. So the main thing you wanna do is use your graduation cap to cover as much of the body as you can. Then you will wanna go ahead and drag your mouse across the two images again and then click slice. This will leave two images. You can go ahead and delete them both. And what slicing basically does is cut the image out for you. Now by clicking test on the left hand side, you can go ahead and insert whatever test you want. Initially, I did put class of 2019 because she is class of 2019. However, I know this may sound confusing because I recorded the video in 2020 and it is now 2021. But none of this, I chose class of 2020. This is the channel where you're free to spark your creativity, but also keep in mind the school's colors. For instance, her school colors was green and yellow. So of course I did change my test to yellow, but also I could have chose white. I could have chose black, but I decided that yellow looked best for me. Go ahead and position the test how you want and add more if you choose. Select both the test and the image and at the bottom right hand corner, you want to click flatten and this will ensure that the text will print off on top of the image instead of separate. So after this, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how you would print it. However, the printing of this video will not be until the end because I do have one more design to show you guys. To print your image, click make it, then click continue, then go ahead and press send to printer. And then it will ask you what printer you want to use, how many copies, and if you want to cut your bleed on or off. Yes, I do recommend to cut your bleed on because this will ensure that your image does print out vibrant. So of course, then after that, you will click print. But real quick, I just want to go ahead and change the size of my image again. Because as you see on that letter size paper, it was too small. So I am going to make it a bit larger. The final size for my graduation cap fan was 9 by 6. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly how much larger it looks. And then we can go ahead with the next design. So always, always, before starting a new project or a new design, make sure your project is saved. So I could have clicked new project, but I decided to go ahead and use the same canvas. So the next image I'm uploading will be a portrait image. So if you're somehow tuned in to this video still and you don't have a Cricut machine, maybe you're thinking about getting a Cricut machine. I just want you guys to know that I do believe that this whole process of the second fan, not the first one, can be done in Microsoft Word. So for this one, I did change the size to 6.75 by 9.25. And then again, I wrote class of 2020 and I wrote CSHS, which is her high school. And then you want to go ahead and click flatten so that the Cricut will not try to print your image and your test out separately or so that it will not try to cut the test out. All right, so the first step of the printing process is, of course, getting your paper open. 
And also what I forgot to mention is you do want the use system dialog to be on as well. After you turn that on, go ahead and press the green print, but don't press print the second time. Instead, go to preferences, then go to paper quality and change the media to photo paper. Press OK, then print. And the way I inserted my paper was the shiny side was face up. Now you may want to do a test run for this because some printers and some paper do act funny. And the way you guys will do a test run basically for your printer is to take a plain sheet of paper, um, either use a marker or a pen and write a mark on the front of the paper. This will take place of the shiny side of your paper and then stick that part in the printer with the mark that you put on the paper facing up. Um, shoot it through the printer, let it come out, and then if it prints on the side with the mark on it, then you know you're good to go. And if it doesn't, you're not good to go. You have to switch your paper the other way. And I know I just missed explaining to you guys how to go ahead and load your mat and start cutting, but I will be explaining it the second time. So this first time, as I peeled it off my raggedy mat, I did leave off the tassel. This could be due to my raggedy mat, or this could also be to me not being gentle with my paper. If you have the Cricut spatula, that will work better as well. And also, I did use scissors and it turned out really great. So after I got the rest of the tassel off the mat, I placed my photo paper down and smoothed it with my hands. After that, I changed my material settings on my machine to custom and I went to photo paper. Then to load your mat, you just press the first button to load it. And then to make it start cutting, you press the second button, it makes it go. And then the third button will pause it if you need to pause the cut. The same button that you use to load the mat will be the same button that you use to unload the mat. And I did not show this process, but the way I got my photo paper off was by turning the mat upside down and pulling the mat back, not the photo paper. So for this step, you will need some popsicle sticks and you will need a hot glue gun. So just go ahead and place the photo paper wherever you want it to lay up on your popsicle stick. And please do not be lazy like me. Please go ahead and change out your glue sticks. Now the reason I did not do this is because I thought I ran out, but luckily I did find a bunch more. So for this first application process, I do believe I applied it too thin, so I did have to do it a second time. And this is why you always want to ensure that you test out your product before you try to sell it or give it to anyone else. So I applied the hot glue for the second time and smoothed it down with my fingers, and this time it was good to go. So this one was my test paper and I wanted to show you guys one with the tassel on. So that is why it is printed on both sides. And the brand popsicle sticks I'm using are from Woodpile. I believe I picked these up from Hobby Lobby, but you can also find them at your local craft store or Amazon. So basically just keep repeating the same steps, making sure that you put enough glue on there and making sure that you guys are doing your test runs. Cause you know, when you go to a graduation, it is so high, it's so many people. So try to shake it as hard as you can because you know that's exactly what people gonna do when they get it. Don't be afraid to add more glue. The good thing about this photo paper is that it is not thin like regular paper. So when I put the glue down on the popsicle stick, I cannot see my glue through the photo paper. So this definitely is a great buy from your local Dollar Tree. Only $1. I know some people on YouTube have been questioning if this paper even works. I questioned it when I went to my local Dollar Tree. So yes, it does work. Yes, it is profitable. I did sell some graduation fans last year, although like I said, we didn't have traditional graduations, but I did sell some last year and I may plan to sell some this year. So that is pretty much it. Congratulations to class of 2020 and 2021. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to educate, encourage, and empower by sharing this video, especially if you know it can help someone else. And also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.